Welcome, foolish mortals, back to another paranormal podcast from beyond the grave. Tonight's gloomy and macabre tale is a frightful one. I mean, since I have a thing for werewolves and all, and vampires too. Dracula, we didn't forget you. But this one in particular is for all of my motionless and white girlies. The Legend of the Rougarou. Now for the next hour, take my hand and let's go into a new reality. Together, let's travel to the dark and misty swamplands of Louisiana. Are you afraid of the dark? Let's go and search for the Rougarou or Chris Motionless. Either way, it's fine with me. And welcome back. This is a paranormal podcast for those of you that are brave enough to join the summoning circle. Welcome to Ghost Girl Diaries. Tonight, I am your haunted host, the queen of the dead, Crystal Leandra. As the full moon shines brightly above the Louisiana swamp, it casts a silvery glow along the landscape. The stars twinkle as the dark waters ripple. And of course, the water ripples beneath the tall, dark, foreboding cypress trees. In the distance, you can hear frogs. It's an evening chorus while they wait for their meals, the mosquitoes. They too are on the hunt. But a distant howl breaks the stillness, and it's like all of nature is frozen. It sounds like it may be a wolf, but we know it's definitely not what we're used to seeing here on planet Earth. Perched on top of a moss-draped fallen tree is a massive, snarling creature on two legs. It tilts its head back and it releases a howl you've never heard before. It's almost like a chilling howl and chant to the moon. But this isn't a werewolf, my friends. This is the legendary Rougarou, known all throughout Louisiana with thousands and thousands of eyewitnesses and you can see all of these online. Driving through on the highways of Louisiana, you're gonna see some of the most beautiful landscapes you've ever seen. History, hauntings, old buildings. Of course, we all love the plantations. The queen of voodoo herself has resided here. Deserted theme parks just give it that eerie extra feeling and unusual museums like the Pharmaceutical Museum. But one location that we don't talk about often enough is the deep mist-covered swamplands that most hunters avoid. Of course, this is Louisiana's most beautiful natural state because it's been untouched, but untouched for what reason? Maybe they wanna keep their natural landscape, or maybe it's because of a couple well-known mythical creatures that we've all heard of. Because not only do they have something like a Bigfoot or a skunk ape, We're also talking about a possible family of Rougarous. And let me tell you this, the Rougarous legend stems back for centuries. This roots to literal medieval times in France. And now it's a part of Louisiana's folklore. In the days of knights and swords and jousting, people feared much more things than just witches and voodoo priestesses and the plague. France was also home to a notorious creature. Now this is what they called the Lugarius, which is also known as the werewolf. And in the 16th century, these creatures were often accused of crime beyond belief in hurting humans. If a home was ransacked overnight in France, it was a werewolf. If a child vanished without a trace, this creature was held responsible for literally everything. In fact, back in that time, if you were to speak with someone, it would be hard to imagine a world where not everything was blamed on the Rougarou. That was just the reality many centuries ago. Much like Salem and our witch trials, people in France would catch people in the 16th century and claim that they were werewolves and they were put on trial. Often these people were found wandering in the woods or acting strangely, and that's when they were accused. The courts would ask the public opinions of the accused werewolves. And because they had a fear of being labeled a witch or a rougarou, it often led to some sort of a unanimous agreement between the person and the court. But the fear of the Rougarou has gone on for centuries within France, and it has now become a legend that is told to children to this day. French Catholics are warned that if they fail to observe Lent for many years in a row, that they will too be turned into a Rougarou. And there's tales of children who misbehave and their parents warn them, if you're not good, a Rougarou will get you in the middle of the night, so you better behave. This is when the French started migrating to places like Canada and the United States, and they carried those folklore tales with them. 
and now it has embedded itself into the new land of Louisiana and the United States. The Rougarou is said to dwell within the swamps of Louisiana, potentially sharing its habitat with what we know as the Honey Island Swamp Monster, also known as a skunk or a Bigfoot. Cajun folklore maintains that the Rougarou primarily preys on Catholics who fail to preserve Lent. This is just echoing the old tales of the French. However, people to this day in Louisiana say that the Rougarou has a taste for anyone. But many people to this day in Louisiana say that you don't have to be Catholic to become prey of the Rougarou. There is an interesting version of the story of the Rougarou. It's said that the Rougarou is cursed for 101 days, and unless that Rougarou or Rougarou hybrid person that curse on to someone else, it will remain a Rougarou forever. It's often said that this curse is performed on humans from either a local witch or a voodoo priestess. While to some this may just be a legend or folklore from France, there are still sightings of the Rougarou to this day. In fact, when I was doing research, I was shocked to find forms and forms online of hunters even having discussions of which swamps and which areas to avoid because they have actually ran in to a Rougarou. I wanna make it quite clear from what I've read from locals in Louisiana, this is not one werewolf we're talking about, it is many. One becomes infected, sometimes it infects others, sometimes it uses humans as prey, and that is how the Rougarous grow in numbers. Although now in Louisiana, the Rougarou is a huge piece of pop culture. There's even a Rougarou festival. And at the zoo in New Orleans, they even feature a Rougarou exhibit. It's a statue of the creature in his homey, swampy setting. And there was even discussions of the New Orleans pelicans changing their name to the Rougarou. In French, it is pronounced Lou Garou, okay? So I'm just reading my notes. Because I was thinking to myself, where did Rougarou come from? You know what I mean? Where, that's such a sporadic name, but translated to English, it's Rougarou. Or probably when the settlers came to Louisiana, they interpret it a different way. Rather than saying Lougarou, they called it the Rougarou. Loup, L-O-U-P, is a French word for wolf, which is the loup. And Garou is a Frankish word for werewolf. So when you, it's a man who transforms into a animal, Rougarou. Now, obviously this came from the French settlers. So this is gonna be kind of my take on it, everything I've been researching. I'm really fascinated by this, if I'm being completely honest with you. Do I know if this is true or not? I don't know, you know, I was, I'm very skeptical when I first kind of came into this research because you guys know how much I love to dive deep and dig into these kind of stories. But then when I got online, and of course you're free to do the same, when I started really getting deep going down rabbit holes with the Rougarou, there are so many eyewitness accounts and I'm going to read a few of them to you throughout this podcast. And I was like, there is no way. And I mean, these people are deathly afraid. They're deathly afraid that something might happen to them if they encounter these Rougarous. It's really interesting. There's some people that really truly believe that it preys on humans and it uses us as like a snack or bait or whatever. And then there's others that believe they are, you know, legion, one as many, right? Like trying to create as many Rougarous as possible. And it clearly stems from some sort of a, <clears throat> I guess, French voodoo priestess or Cajun voodoo priestess that, you know, is, is able to curse people as a Rougarou. For me, <clears throat> it was just so many eyewitnesses to read that, that people are in actual fear. I was, and like, they don't, they're anonymous. Like they're embarrassed to like be known that like they had this encounter, but they're scared to death. I also saw this on a documentary. I saw, I don't remember which show it was. There was a documentary on the Rougarou and this guy is talking about how he had just recently moved to New Orleans and he was shopping in a shop and he was really just looking for new friends. He was in his twenties and he ended up running into a girl who was maybe a little bit older, maybe about, and they were kind of like flirty in the store, but she was also that like mysterious seductive side. And so he just kind of blatantly went up to her and said, Hey, I'm new here. I'm from out of town. I would love to, you know, get to know you and take you on a date and he asked her for her number. And she basically said like, no, no, I just, I'm not comfortable, you know, with giving anyone 
my number on the first date or like before the first date. But if you want to meet up maybe like this week, maybe we could go meet at like a public park or something. Like she was kind of reiterating she would feel safer that way. And so he agreed. So in the store, she wrote down like Friday, six o'clock at this certain park. Well, he wasn't familiar with the area. So he ended up like Googling, cause this was probably 2003, 2005 ish when you had to use MapQuest for everything, right? So he's Googling where to go. And he realizes the state park that she wants to meet at is like 45 minutes away. And he said, you know, I was really desperate for friends. He thought she was really beautiful. He just went out on a limb and decided, hey, I'm gonna go meet her. So he went to this park at six o'clock. He ended up showing up a little bit early. He said he got there around five. He wanted to be there so that he could really know where he was since he wasn't familiar with the area. And he decided to wait near the basketball court. There ended up being some other men that were coming to play basketball and they saw him by himself and they basically asked him to join in. And he decided to, yeah, I'll go ahead and play basketball with these people. So he ended up playing basketball, you know, six o'clock rolls around, there's no sign of her. 6.30 rolls around, still no sign of her. Seven o'clock, 7.30, still no sign of her. So he just kind of assumed she was a no-show. But by this time he had made friends that were playing basketball. And they basically said, hey, you know, we don't live too far. Do you want to come over for like pizza and beer? And the guy said, yeah, that sounds like a great plan. Well, we don't live too far, so why don't we just walk? Now, I think that he at this point didn't know what a Rougarou was, didn't know it existed. But from what I can tell and from what people say is if you're living on the outskirts of Louisiana, especially near or around the swamplands like parks, you don't want to be walking at night. You just don't. It's dangerous. And also there's alligators, obviously. You know, it's more than just the Rougarou. It's, it's what we deal with on a very 3D basis on this planet, right? He left his car at the park and he decided to walk with the people back to their house. And it was very dark, there were no street lights, but he was really confident that these friends that he had just made knew where they were going. And as they were walking, there was like five of them, they started hearing something snarling coming out from the trees. Cause remember now they're having to walk out of a state park in order to exit to go to this person's house. And this thing, which he swears up and down was a Rougarou, was chasing them and actually ended up catching this guy and like scratched his chest, ripped his shirt open. Apparently one of the guys was holding like a pew pew, you know what I'm saying? And he didn't shoot at the Rougarou, but he shot it off and it scared the Rougarou off. But he said when he turned around and looked at the Rougarou, he realized that he recognized her eyes, which are so interesting because we always say the eyes are the windows of the soul. I don't know. I find it fat. Like, so that means even if you transform into a Rougarou, you're going to be noticed. You're going to be recognized. But he swears that that experience really happened. He went back to the friend's house. They were really shaken up. They let him basically stay there till morning. And then they went back and got his car. And he said he was very leery about ever meeting a woman like that again. So I just like to use this as an example while I was doing my research because these Rougarous, if they do exist, are literally just like you and I walking through stores. They are literally human. Now, of course, in my mind, I was thinking werewolf, you know, werewolf always howls on a full moon. But when I started reading the eyewitness accounts online in all of these forms, they actually say the most dangerous time to go out in the swamps is when there is a new moon. So when there is a new moon in the sky, there is no light, right? It is pitch black. And apparently that is when the Rougarou comes out to feast on its prey, which actually makes a lot more sense because, you know, it's dark. They don't want to be seen, right? I don't know if this means, you know, they live in human when they're, it, it, to me, this is how I'm interpreting it. Okay. In Rougarou form, they're living in the swamps. In human form, they're living a normal life. Once again, that curse can last, you know, up to 101 days. I don't know. I just find it fascinating. I just find this whole thing fascinating because I love stories like this. This is why I wanted you guys to be submerged into this when we started chatting. Now, apparently there's also sugar canes in Louisiana and apparently they like the sugar cane fields to hide in. So this is another area of like the woodlands and the swamplands where they fear humans fear because there could be an actual Rougarou. Apparently Arcadia is the most known place for the Rougarou if you're looking for a centralized location and but it is you know the greater area of New Orleans definitely in the swamplands but 
I just found it so fascinating. They say when they see the creature, it is definitely a muscular human body that transforms with the head of a wolf or a dog. So it's literally like the werewolf legends. Some people who don't believe in the Ruguru say, oh, it's, you know, just a story that's inspired to, you know, put fear and obedience into people and their children. Don't go into the swamps. Don't go out at night. Don't be a bad kid and you won't get taken by a Ruguru. Also, you know, if you're Catholic and you don't follow the rules of Lent, you're either going to turn into a Ruguru or you're going to get hunted and killed by one. The curse of the legend says, if you turn into a Ruguru by a voodoo priestess, a Cajun voodoo priest, you have 101 days. If at any time you transfer the curse or the illness to another human, you break that curse on yourself, which is why they claim it's so sporadic. Like they'll go through phases where they see a ton of Rugurus and not many at all, and a ton of Rugurus and none at all. But it has to be transmitted by human blood. During the day, the Ruguru turns into human form, and at night, it turns back into a Ruguru. Humans, they say once you're infected with this, the, the instinct is to know not to tell anyone that you have been transformed into a Ruguru because there's a fear that you may end up being hunted. These are all similar stories that go through tales of the lichen as well. Apparently the Ruguru was featured in uh, the Winchester Supernatural with Sam and Dean Winchester. I need to watch that. So apparently, just so you know, it's season four episode Metamorphosis. So if you're interested in seeing how it was interpreted there, I'm going to definitely go back and watch that. Apparently it was depicted as a man slowly becoming a bloodthirsty, losing control, you know, human werewolf that um, needed to feast upon human flesh. If their NBA team is wanting to change their name to Ruguru, doesn't it make you wonder, could it be real? At what point does, you know, where do legends, this is what I love to, like my deep thought processes are. If it's a legend and it's folklore, at what point does it become real? Or what point was it real to make it become a legend or folklore? Like I can't help but transmit myself into that world, which is where I wanted you guys to come with me. And even then, what I've talked about before is that I really believe in alternate realities, parallel realities. You know, like I told you, my parents, I can't see them right now because the 3D world, this planet is so dense and heavy, but they are here right now. They can see me. They can see you're, all your family who's crossed over your spirit team. They can see you right now because there's alternate realities. And it makes you wonder is we go through these phases where you see a lot of Rugurus and no Rugurus are in those moments that we're seeing lots of sightings of them online. Are the realities coexisting at once? Is there sort of a ripple effect, if you will, you know, in time where we're able to overlap both? I feel like this could be true even with, you know, Bigfoot. We really do see some Bigfoot videos and everyone's like, oh, but we've never... You know, we've never found a dead Bigfoot or nobody's ever hunted a, a dead Bigfoot. What if it's just a ripple in the reality, in the matrix that we're seeing and it does exist just in a different reality and we're only able to get glimpses of it? What if the Rougarou is the same? What if Dracula is the same? Personally, I would like to hope so. It's interesting because even professors at multiple different universities in Louisiana talk about the concept of the Rougarou. And I feel like you know, no matter what class that is, whether it's anthropology or whatever, maybe it's literature, I don't know. I just feel like it's a big deal if it's even brought into like cultural tradition and literacy inside of a university. I just feel like there could be some sort of merit. I also saw some other legends where people were talking about, because I was wondering like, okay, let's just get real for a second. If you are human, you have like your conscious. What happens when you turn into a werewolf? You know, like clearly if you're comparing someone like Vlad the Impaler or Dracula, they still have their consciousness, right? But like, and like dogs are smart. Like I have dogs, dogs are smart. But if you turn into a werewolf, do you still have the same conscious? And people that have encountered it say yes, they still maintain human intelligence. And I just thought that that was really fascinating as kind of like a sprinkle to the story. Apparently the Rougarou story just depends on who you're talking to in Louisiana. Yes, it's highly believed. Yes, the story is, you know, passed on from generation to generation, but apparently there are many, many different versions of it. So it just sort of depends on what interpretation of the story that you're hearing from, depending on the family that you're speaking from culturally. If it's a France, you know, if it's a, if it's a family that has been, you know, generations from France or Cajun, you know, they're going to have different stories, similar stories on it. I want to talk about some of these 
interesting eyewitness account online. On the back porch in the evening, if there was enough breeze to keep the mosquitoes off, people would tell stories. One that he remembers best was told by him by his father, who first heard the story by his great-grandfather. In this story, a young oysterman was haunted by the Ruguru, losing his friendships and fiancé as a result. Eventually, this man was able to kill the Ruguru with a walking stick sharpened from oyster shells in the ground. Commonly, the Ruguru is described as a big man covered with hair with really big teeth but the saddest eyes. He said he heard these tales as a child and they were passed around like small town gossip. If a stranger was feared or had done something wrong, the Ruguru was a way to tell the story about them. Today, the Ruguru is a staple of Cajun folklore. Many writers use the Ruguru as an allegation of dual identity. The Ruguru is a way to describe having a foot in two different worlds, specifically in Anglo-American and French worlds in Louisiana. Stories about the creature have also used to inspire fear and obedience in children. And one such story that was told by elders was to persuade Cajun children to behave. Another variation suggests the beast will hunt down and kill the Catholics who do not follow the rules of Lent. I also found this funny article that said, Such monster makeovers are common more, more than a millennium ago. Vampires were demonic vectors of disease, possibly reflecting the very thought of rabies, but today they're suave and sexy thanks to Interview with the Vampire, Twilight, and True Blood. We've now seen the evolution of werewolves, and now it's become a sophisticated character. I'm just going to personally say that I would be more afraid of an alligator than anything, although I also wouldn't want to run into a werewolf, once again, unless it was Chris Motionless. Okay, here's another witness story. So this happened to me a few years ago. I was visiting a friend's house in the Houston River area, the section of river that's pretty swampy. We were frog hunting at night. It was a full moon, so it made spotting bullfrogs easier. Anyway, I was wandering down the river bank when we heard a sound. All went quiet. Not even the crickets chirped. We heard dozens of frogs dive right into the water. We knew that there was something very wrong. Then came a distant growl, like something evil. This was from the other side of the river. We killed our spotlight and we watched in the direction of the sound. And what I saw chilled me to the bone. It was a massive wolf with patchy black fur, yet no visible skin, and only a head and a skull with empty eyes. It appeared to be locked onto its prey. So we shut our other light off and we watched for a moment. Looking back, it was really stupid that we didn't flee. It ended up running back into the woods and started running down the river. So we decided to dip out and get as far away as possible. So the big question is, why is the Ruguru dangerous? Not only does it attack humans, but apparently it's also been known for killing livestock as well. So this to me sounds a lot like the goat sucker, which is the chupacabra. It also has the power to curse those who see it, which is why so many hunters refuse to go into certain swamps at night because they're afraid if they even look at it, they will become cursed. It could also lead to a lifetime of bad luck and misfortune. And of course, as the legend states, the only way to keep yourself safe from a Ruguru is to always maintain carrying a piece of silver, which is said to repel the creature. Sightings of the Ruguru have been reported for centuries, but of course they're often labeled as hoaxes or misidentifications. The locals do believe. Locals do believe. In recent years, there have been a few well-known sightings of the Ruguru in the area. The most famous one was 2016, and this was in Huma, H-O-U-M-A, Louisiana. And there was actually a video that was posted online showing what appeared to be this dark, large creature with glowing eyes, and it was literally walking through a residential neighborhood. Anyone that lived in that area or neighborhood actually confirmed that that was indeed the Rougarou. So what to look out for for a Rougarou? A large body, muscular, sharp teeth, sharp claws, glowing red eyes. Sounds like my kind of man said that it can be extremely dangerous for a human or livestock to encounter. So if you see the Rougarou, be careful when you go into the swamps of Louisiana at night. You never know what you'll find. So this concludes our haunted field trip to Louisiana. And tell me, do you believe in the Rougarou? Please like, follow, share, subscribe, comment. As much interaction as you have, it will boost our content. The more you interact with this video, the more we will be pushed in the algorithm. And until we meet again, beware of the whispers in the dark. Sweet dreams.